here we have an equation with decimals. So the general approach we're going to use for this is first we're going to clear the decimals by multiplying by the right power of 10 that we need. Then we're going to use the regular steps for solving a linear equation. We're going to clear parentheses, collect like terms, get all the x's to one side, all the numbers to the other side, and then isolate the x. All right, so our first step, we need to figure out what can we multiply both sides by to get rid of the decimals. And what you want to look at for that is how many positions do you need to move the decimal? Here, we're going to move it twice, twice here, and twice here. And the reason we need to move it twice is because of this guy right here. We need two places moved in order to get an integer of 5x instead of 0.05. All right, two places moved means multiply by 100. So the number of decimal positions, two places, equals the number of zeros in your multiplier, 100. And that's how you can always figure that out. So if we go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 100, then every separate term is going to get that 100. And remember that each term is separated by an addition here. So I have one term. Things being multiplied together are terms. Here I have 100 going on to the next term, because these two guys are being multiplied together. And then these two pieces are being multiplied together. So they get the 100 once. All right, we don't want to give it to each one separately because they're stuck together by multiplication. They count as one single term. So on the first one here, 100 multiplied onto the first term makes the decimal move twice and gives us 20 times 24. 100 multiplied onto the second term moves the decimal twice, gives us 5x, and we just carry down the, the plus sign in between them equals 100 multiplied here gives us two places moved to be a 10 and just carry down the 6 plus x. Now we have just a normal linear equation without decimals so we're going to follow the normal steps. Next step would be distribute. We want to clear out any parentheses. Now this here we just multiply so we get 20 times 24 so 10 times 24 is 240, so we'll double that and we get 480. Bring down the plus 5x equals, distribute the 10 and we get 60 plus 10x. And now we would collect, collect like terms separately on each side of the equation if there were any. But there aren't any. So we can move to the next step, which would be get all the x's onto one side. So I'll call that the move x's to one side step. And you always do that by using the addition property. You add or subtract the same thing to both sides of the equation. So let's go ahead and get the x's to go to the left, which means I need to subtract the 10x here so it cancels out and it moves over there. So bring down the 480. And now we have 5 minus 10 gives us take away 5x. Bring down the 60. Now we want numbers to other side. So we take away the 480. And remember, what we're doing is we're trying to get x all by itself on one side of the equation. That's why we need this 480 to go to the other side. We have to get away from the x. Take away 480 on both sides. That cancels out. We get minus 5 x. And then we do 60, take away 480, gives us minus 420. We're almost there. Now we need to isolate the x. Isolating will happen by multiplying or dividing the same thing on both sides of the equation. In this case, we want to divide by minus 5. Because the minus 5 is being multiplied, we need to divide it off. We always do the opposite operation. So the minus signs cancel out and we get a positive. And 420 divided by 5 gives us 84. 
And there's our final answer. Oops. You can't see that last step, can you? There. There's our final answer.